Hello, welcome back to Algebra. In this lesson, we're going to cover what we're going to call special products of binomials. This will be part one of two. So in this lesson, I want to introduce the concept of special products. I'll give you an idea of where they come from so you're not just randomly memorizing things. And we'll do a couple of problems here, but in the next section, we'll really roll up our sleeves and get a lot of practice. So what do we mean by special products of binomials? Up until now, we've multiplied binomials together. And remember, we used the, the thing to help us remember, F-O-I-L, but I've been stressing over and over again that that's really just the concept of distributing things in uh, from the outside to the inside of whatever you're multiplying by. So F-O-I-L is helpful to remember how to do it, but ultimately that's all we're really doing. Now, there are a couple of special things, a special thing, special products that pop up over and over and over and over again in algebra. And they actually have really neat results and special uh, simplifications that are that are just, it's something that's occasionally worth memorizing. I don't usually like to tell you to memorize things, but in this case, we're gonna be using these so many different times that we're gonna derive them, we're gonna talk about them, but ultimately you probably will go ahead and need to memorize these as we move on through algebra. The good news is they're very, very simple and they're not hard to understand. So let's take, for instance, the very first case. What I'll do is I work on the right-hand board, we'll talk about everything, and then at the very end of the day, what we'll do is we'll move over, over to the left here and we'll write a summary of everything to help us in our future problems. All right, so just for example, let's take a look. What would happen if you had to multiply these binomials together? A plus B, and you wanted to multiply that by A minus B. Now, A and B are variables, of course. The only difference between this term and this term is just that one is joined by a plus sign and the other one is joined by a minus sign. Now, when you see a multiplication of binomials like this, you handle it the same way we've handled all multiplication of binomials. So you can think of it as F-O-I-L if you want. I like to think of it as just distributing the A into both terms. So A times A is gonna give you A squared. You add the exponents. A times negative B is gonna be negative AB. And you're done with multiplying in A, so you move over here and you multiply B times A. Of course, you can rewrite it the other way, making it A times B. In other words, I could write it BA, but I'm gonna write it as A times B because I know I'm gonna be matching terms up here. And then finally, after going in here, I'm gonna multiply B times negative B, which will give me negative B squared. Now you see, because this is a special case of A plus B, times a minus b, what happens is that these two terms in the middle, a, b is negative here and a, b is positive right here. So these two terms actually go away and make zero. So what you're gonna end up having when you have a plus b times a minus b is going to be in this case, you can just see it right here, it's just gonna be a squared minus b squared, right? a squared minus b squared. So the, what we really wanna write down even though we have it here, something to remember for the future, is that basically any time we're multiplying something that's of the form a plus b times a minus b, of course we can multiply it all out and cancel and make this zero every time, but if we happen to recognize that it fits into this form, then we already know without doing all of this FOIL that the answer is just gonna be a squared, whatever the first thing is squared, minus b squared, which is whatever the second thing is squared. Right? So this is something to remember. And because of that, I'll kind of put a little circle around it. I'll go ahead and summarize it over on the other board. But in algebra textbooks, you will see things like this. And it will tell you, hey, if you ever see a plus b times a minus b, it always equals this. And a lot of students go, well, thanks, but where did that come from? It comes from exactly this. When you multiply the variables out and get all of the cross terms, what you get is a cancellation. And this cancellation going to zero will happen every single time you're multiplying any two binomials of this form. So just to give you a concrete example of, of when this would actually be used, just one simple example, we'll do more complicated examples later, but just as an example, what if you're multiplying the binomial x plus two times x minus two? First of all, check to see if it's of this form. This a plus b, a minus b can be anything. They can be variables, they can be numbers, but what it's saying is the first thing here has to match the first thing here, just like these match. The second thing, whatever it is, has to match the second thing here, which the twos match. And you have to have a plus sign in the first and a minus sign in the second, right? Like this. And whenever you have it of that form, you of course can go and do the FOIL, that's absolutely fine. If you forget any of this, no problem. But if I happen to recognize that it actually is of this form, then without doing any actual multiplication, I know it's gonna be the first term squared, x squared, minus the second term squared, 
which is 2 squared. So I know the answer is going to be x squared minus 4. So you see, I didn't actually have to do any FOIL, but that's only because this is a special case where it's a plus b times a minus b, where a and b can be anything, any variables and any numbers, as long as they match and they're, they're of that form and one is a plus and one is a minus term, right? Then what ends up happen is it happening is it always comes out to, to uh, in this case, x squared minus four. Now, if you were gonna do it the long way, which is absolutely fine if you forget this, then the way you do it is you take the first terms, you make it x squared, the outside terms, negative two x, the inside terms, positive two x, and the outside terms, negative four. So you can see right away, you're gonna get x squared minus four. So the moral of the story is with these special products in algebra, try to remember them. Because oftentimes when you're multiplying and you're simplifying a very large equation, you might come across something of this form very often. That's too complicated to explain now why you will come across that. But very often you will see that kind of thing pop up. If you do and you forget this stuff, it's absolutely fine just to multiply it out just as you always do and get the answer. But if you happen to recognize it's of this form, then you can save a little time just by writing the answer term down. First term squared minus second term squared, that's gonna be the answer, no matter what the details are inside of here. So that's one of them that we want to remember. Let's move on to another one that's equally important. What if you had uh, a binomial, A plus B? Remember, A and B can be anything, numbers, variables, whatever but it's a, it's a binomial and I'm squaring that binomial. So first of all, what does squaring a binomial mean? What does squaring anything mean? Two squared means two times two. Three squared means three times three. 17 squared means 17 times 17. So A plus B squared just means the entire quantity A plus B multiplied by A plus B. In other words, it's multiplied by itself and there's two of them here because it's squared. So of course, you don't need to memorize the special formulas here. What you need to do is just know how to handle everything by hand, right? So if we were just gonna multiply everything out, it would be the first terms, a squared, and then distribute a times b, giving me plus ab, and then the inside terms would be ba, but I'm gonna write it backwards and make it ab so I can join it with this other term here, and then distribute the b into the last term, being b squared. This is exactly FOIL, right? But you notice that this term matches this term. Now they're both positive, so they don't go away. They don't cancel. However, what we get is a squared plus ab plus ab gives me two times ab plus b squared. All right, so the bottom line is <clears throat> anytime I have a binomial like this, where a can be whatever and b can be whatever, but I'm squaring that binomial, then it is always going to look like this in the answer a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So let me just write that down and show you what I mean. So if you have a plus b squared, of course you can multiply it out as we've done here, but if you happen to remember that it's of this form, a squared plus two times a times b plus b squared, it's actually a faster way to get to the answer. So I'm gonna circle this because it's something that we're gonna to need to remember. This is something, whoops, I wrote this down wrong. It's a plus b inside the parentheses. The entire quantity is squared on the outside. So what this means is, if you're given anything, a, something plus something, and you have the whole quantity squared like that, then really you can kind of think of this square term as going in and affecting the a, making a squared, then going and affecting the b and making b squared, but there's an interior term that comes about, which is because of the, both of the terms there, which is two times the first thing times the second thing here. Now, you do have to memorize this. Um, if you forget it, if you don't remember it, if you're on a test and you can't remember, is it 2AB, what is it? Then just forget it, just write it out like this and just do everything manually as we have done. But if you can remember this, then it can save you a lot of work because then you won't have to do all this stuff and add the interior terms. And as you might guess, squaring things in algebra happens quite a lot. So you're gonna run into this often. So an example of this would be, for instance, x plus three and I'm gonna square that. So you see A and B can be anything, in this case X and three, but whatever it is, it's squared. So of course I can do it the long way, no problem, but the shorter way would be, well, I know it's gonna be the first thing squared, which would be X squared, plus two times the first thing times the second thing, two times X times three, just write it like this for right now, two times A times B, which is the first thing times the second thing, two times X times three, plus the last thing squared. 
and I can clean it up in the next step, x squared plus 6x plus 3 times 3 is 9, and this is the final answer. So uh, x squared plus 6x plus 9. If you don't remember this, if you have a hard time remembering this, then forget it. Just write this as the product of two binomials, which you can, of course, do. So we can write it another way. We can say this is, if you forgot that thing, x plus 3, x plus 3. How do we do it? We take the first terms, we distribute it in, making x squared. And then x going in times the 3 gives me 3x. We're done with that, so we move here. 3 times x gives me another 3x. And then 3 times 3 gives me 9. And you can see right away, these are going to give you 6x, and everything else matches exactly. So if you forget these little shortcuts, fine, just write them down and multiply them out. But I can tell you right now that squaring binomials will pop up a lot from here on out. So it's, it is worth your time to try to remember that, but you will probably remember it on your own without any work uh, as we go forward because you're just going to see it so much. Now, along those lines, actually, I want, to, I want to do it on the same board. Along those lines, oftentimes, you will find something similar. Instead of a plus b squared, we also run into this a lot, a minus b squared. So it's exactly the same. A and b, is everything's the same, except it's a minus sign instead of, plus sign, instead of a plus sign. And when we do that, how do we handle it? If we were to do it manually, it would be the following, a minus b times a minus b, because I've squared the thing, right? So if I take these terms, I'll get a squared. If I distribute the a times negative b, I'll get negative ab. Then I move over here, negative b times a will give me negative ab again. And then don't for, this is where you can get tripped up here. Negative b times negative b, negative times negative is positive, and b times b is b squared. But these can tend to be added together, except they're negative. Uh, which they were, it's a little different because they were positive before, but these are negative now, so I can have a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. So the moral of the story here is if I have the exact same thing, where uh, the only difference by a minus sign, a minus b squared, then it's going to be very similar to before. It'll just be a squared minus 2 times a times b plus b squared. And I'm circling the things in purple that are worth remembering. I know it seems like I'm just throwing a bunch of stuff at you, but this will become very easy for you to do as we work with problems because you're going to run into this a lot, right? So to give you just one quick concrete example of that would be, for instance, what if I had x minus 4 squared? You see this in an equation somewhere, and you need to multiply that out, okay? Well, if you recognize, hey, it's a binomial squared, then I can just do that very easily by taking the first thing and squaring it. A minus sign, because it's minus on the inside, 2 times the first thing times the second thing, and then plus whatever the last thing is squared, like this, then what it'll end up being is x squared minus 8x plus 4 times 4 is 16. Let me double check myself. x squared minus 8x plus 16. All right? And that's what I'm going to basically get. Negative 4 times negative 4. There you go. Now, if you were to multiply this x minus 4 times x minus 4, I'll leave it to, your, to, to do yourself, but it's going to look exactly or very similar to what we've done up here, and you'll get exactly the same answer. So the bottom line is I have given you a lot of extra problems, but there's only really three things I want you to remember in this lesson. There's the first one here. There's the... Uh, the binomial squared here with a plus sign, and then there's the binomial squared with a minus sign. And they're, that, they're so important that, um, just to help you remember, and also because I want to leave them on the board for the next lesson, I want to go ahead and put them up here. So these don't have particular names, but if you have a plus b multiplied by a minus b, so these aren't squared, they're different because one's plus and one's minus, it will always work out to a squared minus b squared. And then the way I'm going to write the next one, is a little bit different than the way you'll probably see it in most books, but I like it like this because it helps, it helps me remember what to do. Let's write it as a plus or minus b squared. See, I notice I put a plus or a minus here because in some cases it might be a plus b, in other cases it might be a minus b. So the answer that you should get from that will be a squared and then plus or minus 2 times a times b plus b squared. Notice I have a plus or minus here. The way you read this is, if it ends up being a plus b, that's the top sign. a plus b means it's going to be a squared plus, I choose the top sign, 2ab plus b squared. In other words, if I choose the top sign here, I choose the top sign here. If I choose the bottom sign, if it's a minus b, then it's a squared minus, the bottom sign here, 2ab plus b squared. That matches exactly what I wrote on the board. 
This is uh, called the difference of two squares here because I have two things squared and I'm taking the difference. It's a plus b times a minus b. And these things in purple are exactly the same thing. When you have a plus sign, it's a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. When you have a minus square sign, it's a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. So plus goes with plus, minus goes with minus, which is the reason I wrote it this way. Plus goes with plus, minus goes with minus, and it's a little bit more compact on the board. So I'm going to leave this on the board and we're actually going to use it to solve more examples in the next lesson. I want to stress to you that these um, special products of binomials are not something that you have to memorize. It's something that makes your life a little bit easier when you're solving an equation and you happen to know or you happen to notice that the binomials that you're squaring or multiplying take these special forms. They can save you a little work. But I will also say that in a few lessons, we're going to learn how to do what we call factoring trino factoring polynomial expressions. And when we do factoring, it's extremely useful to memorize these things. And I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but that's why we're presenting it now and getting practice with it. So not only will we use it for this stuff, we'll also use it for factoring later on. So follow me on to the next lesson. We'll get some more practice with these special products of binomials.